Abu Dhabi Dude! Hi there, this is Abu Dhabi Dude. Welcome back. And um, we got another video today, and uh, today I'm on a trip up to Glasgow in order to have a dash cam installed. And I just thought I'd go through the, the process with you, share my thoughts, and have a little discussion about dash cams. Um, just before I started the video back there, I just encountered the perfect situation that would justify having the dash cam. Um, an inconsiderately driven, or not even inconsiderately driven, just badly driven BMW X6. Um, there was a bin lorry coming the other way, on the wrong side of the road, but he was passing parked cars and doing the bins, which he has to do. Um, but to me, and what I did, and it worked, as opposed to what the BMW did, which didn't work, um, but what I did was I, or what I thought would be the sensible way to handle it, was stay on the left hand side, stay on the correct side of the road, and then let the um, let the bin lorry pass the parked cars, leaving plenty of space so that the vehicle length wouldn't be an issue, and then give him give him room to pu to pull into the left, his left, and then I continue on on the on the correct side of the road. What the BMW in front of me did was pull over to the right onto the wrong side of the road and stop, leaving no room for anyone to go anywhere. What is it with people? So anyway, um, so I'm getting a dash cam. Uh, now let me start off just by saying I'll mention a few companies during this video. I'm not receiving any form of consideration or remuneration or sponsorship from any of them. I'm paying for this out of my own pocket and I'm paying full price. Um, so yeah, I did a bit of looking online and found a company called Dashcam Man over in Glasgow who does dash cams, funnily enough. I, the first thing that drew me to them as a company of interest, if you like, was the fact that they travelled to you. They installed them at your home or at your workplace, which I thought, great, we'll have that. Then when I spoke to them, uh, I was outside their service area, so I was going to have to go to them. But by that point, I'd found out enough about the company to decide that I wanted them to do my camera anyway, so I'm driving over. It's only 40 miles. In fact, I don't think it's even 40 miles. about 38 miles, I think. Um, right, a little roundabout. Roundabout terror there. Um, so yeah, it's only it's less than 40 miles anyway, which is, you know, quite a nice drive. It's a sunny day. The temperature's got up to the dizzy heights of 12 degrees. Um, and yeah, nice drive, no big deal. So, um, the fact that they didn't visit wasn't really a big issue in the end, although that was what drew me to them in the first place. But after doing a bit of digging, you know, I spoke to them, did some internet looking, um, and they were very interesting, very appealing, because, well, when I spoke to the guy, he was very passionate. Um, he actually seemed genuinely passionate about what he does. Um, so I like that. I like to know that the guy working on my car is actually interested in what he's doing. So that's the first thing. Um, second thing, looking at them, they've done a lot of high-end vehicles. So, you know, you don't get the feeling you get the car back with big oily thumbprints over the trim and stuff. Um, and also that they'll know what they're doing and the trim will be put back properly and, you know, there'll be no loose bits and stuff. Because I want it properly installed. I want all the wires hidden. Um, and the final thing that really clinched the deal was they've done an eye pace before. So they've already worked out where to run the wires and what to do with the trim and etc. etc. Um, and he sent me pictures of the install that he's done on an eye pace and it looks really good. So I've stuck with them. So I'm, that's why I've chosen them. 
uh, also did some internet searches and they, they seem to have a pretty good reputation. Um, now as for the camera I've chosen, I, I kind of had already chosen this before I spoke to him but talking to him just confirmed it really, is the Blackview DR900S. I think I've got that right, I'm pretty sure it's the 900S, but it's the, as of this recording date, it's the sort of best black view uh, dash cam that they do, it's the, their kind of state of the art one, no, not state of the art, but their, their best one, you know. Ah, oh, jeez, I wish I had a dash cam today. Just idiocy. Ah, right. Coming off at a roundabout and somebody decides to try and come screaming up the... Well, not screaming, but come up the inside and carve me up. Ugh. And then I look in my mirror and she's about 70. I was expecting some 18-year-old thug <laughs> and it's some 70 year old woman anyway <laughs> um so yeah the blackview dr900s the front camera is a 4k uh camera in all honesty i'm not that bothered about that i could have probably gone for the model below it but i you know i thought why not so the front camera is 4k but the rear camera it's a front and rear pair uh which i was particularly that was definitely what I was going for but the front camera uh, is 4k the rear camera is 1080p so full HD uh, which was my requirement I did want HD uh, if the front had been 1080p I'd have been fine with that 4k I'm fine with that um, but I wasn't desperate about the 4k part so I've gone with that it also does all sorts of clever stuff um, it's got impact detectors, a lot of them have that, it's got impact detectors, but what I like with the black view is that when it detects an impact, um, it it's buffering the recording, so it actually starts the recording from, I think it's 5 seconds or 10 seconds before the impact, which is all very clever, but basically it means if somebody drives into your car, you should see them approaching not just the moment of impact at which point the number plate's hidden um, hopefully I'll never need it but that's that's the theory behind it um, so I liked that it also uh, when you're at home it automatically connects to your home Wi-Fi and then it uploads all the videos to the cloud so if the for example if somebody actually steals the car uh, the videos will be in the cloud if they steal it from my house anyway. Oh, sun coming right in that side window there. Sorry about that. Well, that was quite a nice effect, that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, you know, it was quite a few features. It's all controlled through an app. Um, and it was all stuff that I was, I was, I was liking quite a lot. So, oh. Noisy, noisy ice vehicles. Jeez, all right. That's a tractor, in fairness. Um, so yeah, it's it's such a nice piece of kit, and it's also quite a sleek looking camera. The actual camera itself, um, and the installer said the same thing. He said that camera in the eye piece, it almost looked like it was part of the car to begin with. Uh, which is nice, I like things like that. I don't like having stuff stuck on and that's one of my hesitations, if you like, about having a dash cam in the first place is that I don't really like the idea of sticking things onto my car. Um, never have liked that. Never been a fan of that. Uh, well, probably did it when I was a teenager, mind, or in my early 20s, but since then, I've not been a big fan of sticking things onto my car. Um, so yeah, so that's the uh, that's the dash cam I've gone for. That's my reasoning for choosing it. 
nice little burst of acceleration there as we hit the 70 zone coming off the roundabout I never get bored of that never get bored of that um, so yeah that's my thoughts on dash cams that's the model I'm going for that's why I'm going for it. it gives a nice wide field of view as well by the way so there's only a 30 degree window on either side of the car that's not covered which uh, again is pretty good so yeah that's my thoughts that's why I'm going with it and uh, that's what I'm doing today so I'll stop the video now once I get there um, I'll ask him if he'll let me record them doing little bits of the install for the channel and, uh, and I'll try and show you what the process is that, that the poor little car goes through so yeah see you in a bit once we're uh, in Glasgow okay you know just to give you a quick overview of the work involved here um, you can see first of all they cover the seats and wrap the steering wheel in shrink wrap to protect them from getting grubby which is nice with a white interior um, now here's the back camera being installed they route all the wiring through the bodywork uh, between the trim and the, and the bodywork anyway um, so it's all hidden they put a lot of time and effort into doing that in as neat a way as possible and then what they have to do on the eye page because there's a lack of room in the tailgate um, they have to route it under the roof spoiler at the rear there so the spoiler has to come off and I was quite surprised when they took the spoiler off to see there's no actual bodywork under it. It, it it bolts directly onto the frame so the spoiler is the bodywork I assumed that it bolted onto the metal of the tailgate but um, but no you can see there once they lift it it's straight into the sort of the inner inner workings if you like of the tailgate there's no there's no metal panel between the spoiler and the and the interior so yeah that was a bit of a surprise to me I just assumed it would be like roof spoilers of old where it was bolted on to the outside of the car but it's actually an integral part of it um, as you see they put a lot of time again into doing this taking the wires off because of course those wires connected directly to it why wouldn't there be um, and there it goes uh, they had uh, rubber mats on the ground that they laid things like that onto to protect them again and you see uh, the interior at the front where they were working on the front camera and the trim you can see on the door pillar there has been taken off and the wiring is going to be routed down through that to get to the fuses and also you can see the in the roof there you can just see the wire for the rear camera which runs all the way along that top edge of the car under the trim because uh, the rear camera is hardwired into the front camera the front camera does all the work um, all the electronics the wi-fi etc there's the camera mounted in the rear just on at the top of the rear windscreen very small and neat little camera um, not at all obtrusive doesn't get in the way and it's not going to get banged around by luggage and stuff either because it's well out of the way now this I thought was quite interesting in the front they removed the mirror throughout the wiring through that housing you can see there but look at that fan that fan is there to cool that metal chassis you can see that metal chassis is the front camera mounting uh, for the adaptive cruise control the lane or the lane keeping sorry for the lane keep assist the, uh, the two cameras are under that sort of rectangular metal housing I think there's two aren't there but uh, yeah I thought that was quite interesting and the rain sensors in there as well which you could also just about see it's a little round thing to the left of the camera um, but yeah then the, the housing goes back on Bit fiddly of course but there it goes housing back in place and yeah bit of a bit of a little tap can't beat it brute force 
<laughs> now he's just making sure the wires are all rooted out of the way there. So he's taken off to double check it. Um, and then the mirror itself goes back on in place. So all the wiring runs under the trim. Uh, he's remounted the, the door pillar trim. He's putting the door seal back on. Uh, the little airbag badge goes back on there. And there you go. And that was it, really. Now that's the, from the inside of the car, uh, that's the rear camera taken from the back seat. As you can see, it's very small, very neat, uh, not intrusive at all. And that's me, I'm right up against it there, so it's, it's as close as I could get. Uh, from the outside with the privacy glass, you really can't see anything at all. If you peer, you can just about make out the shape of it, but again, it's very subtle and not at all in your face. Uh, from the driver's seat, that's the front camera, well, or not, as you can see, the way they positioned it, it's not visible to the driver. Uh, if you lean forward there, you can just about see where it is. It's behind the mirror. And then from the passenger side, passenger can obviously see it, but I don't think it looks obtrusive or ugly. Um, it almost looks like it is a bit of the car, to be honest. Um, but yeah, from the passenger side, nothing to see. And from the outside, Again, not hugely uh, obvious or intrusive, not overly in your face, just um, quite a subtle little camera. Okay, well, I've just got home from having the installation done. Um, I was going to record this in the car on the way home, but... Uh, sorry, Hugsy. Just banged my camera. Say hello to the nice people, Hugsy. <laughs> um... So yeah, I was going to record it in the car on the way home, but uh, I just, I didn't have all the cameras set up and everything and I just wanted to get home basically. Um, good thing is it's given me a chance to actually have the camera running a bit, so when I got home I had a look at a couple of the video files. Um, and I have to say the picture quality is superb. Um, so just a reminder, it's a 4K camera on the front and a 1080p on the back. Now, I'd have been happy with 1080p all round, to be honest, but if you can have 4K, hey, take 4K. So, yeah, the video quality is very good. Um, I do have to mess around with the settings a bit. It's a bit overly sensitive at the moment because um, it's got sensors that register up and down movement, side to side movement and forward backwards movement. Um, and sudden movements like that are what it registers as events, as it calls them. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it is triggering a lot of events at the moment. One thing I discovered, which was quite cool, actually, is that the iPace acceleration is so sudden that, uh, if you floor it, it moves forward with such a sudden movement that the camera registers it as an impact. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll have to tweak the settings a bit, try and get it to record less events, as they say. Um, but other than that, and it doesn't really make any difference, it just gets flagged up in the video file name. Um, so anything that's recorded with, as an event gets marked with an E, so that it's easier to find them. So if it's doing too many, then it, it, it defeats the objective, because it becomes difficult to find them. Um, but the video files are well organised. There is a little app, um, which I'll just put up on the screen for you now, just so you can see. I'm not going to go through all the details of the app, but um, you can see there you've got uh, cloud login, which allows you to log in via the internet, which I'll, I'm not going to show you. But then it's got the uh, Wi-Fi login, um, which takes you straight to your car, assuming your car's on the same Wi-Fi network as your phone. Um, you can log directly into the camera from your phone so you're not using any of your cloud bandwidth because there is quite a limited uh, cloud download I think it's 100 downloads a month 
which sounds like a lot, but um, I bet you could go through that pretty quickly because these video files are one minute long, remember? And there's two, one for the front and one for the back. So if you want to download a 10 minute clip, that's 10 video files. Sorry, no, a five minute clip is 10 video files because you've got a front camera and a rear camera, five clips, one minute long. Um, but yeah, so you, you can see all the, all the files there, the file names shows you the little icon whether it's the front or the rear camera um, P uh, at the end of the file name just before MP4 the P signifies a parking mode recording uh, N is a normal recording and E is an event uh, the possible impacts and then R and F are just rear and front and then the rest of it is the date and time group so it makes it quite easy to find the video files records them all sequentially um, and that's all there is to say really you can filter you know you've got the filters at top so you can just look at your event recordings or just look at your parking mode recordings or whatever uh, you can also download them to your phone um, and change some of the settings of the of the camera as well um, but yeah so the, the app's quite nice um, I won't uh, I won't go into too much detail on that um, but I'll just show you, and you can play those files as well, by the way, straight to your phone uh, using that, what I just showed you. Um, but yeah, so the video files themselves are really nice. I'll just overlay this now with a, a front first and then a rear camera uh, second. I'll just do one minute clip, so one one minute clip of each camera. Um, but as you can see, uh, they're really nicely detailed, good quality pictures nice and sharp the front one is really nice um, I had the polarizing filter fitted um, so that helps to cut down on the reflections in the front windscreen or the rear windscreen as well um, the Jaguar uh, because of the angle of that windscreen front and rear um, it does get some uh, some reflections so that helps to cut it down and gives you a pretty good picture I think there's not it, Considering that my car has a white interior, um, yeah, there's not many, not many reflections going on there. So that that's really nice. Um, now with the rear one, I was a little bit concerned with the rear one uh, because I've got the privacy glass and it's really dark. The, you know, I've had cars with privacy glass in the past, which is not that dark, but the eye pace is really really dark. So I was a bit concerned about the rear camera with that, but um, it's absolutely fine as you can see here, um, no issues at all. Uh, nice to have the front and rear, it gives you pretty good coverage, not quite all round, I think there's about a 30 degree angle on each side of the car that's not covered, but that's pretty good. Um, it'd have to be a really precise impact or, or whatever, you know, for, for it not to pick that vehicle up at some point um but yeah it's uh i'm very pleased with it i think they've done a brilliant job um if anyone's in the glasgow area looking for one i would personally recommend dash cam man i was very impressed with the service the two guys were really nice um and chatty and you know just nice and friendly um one of them uh, Jay, uh, uh, whose business uh, it's whose business it is, I believe, uh, is really nice. But there's a guy that works with him as well called Gordon. I think I hope I've got that right. If I've got that wrong, I apologise. I'm terrible with names, but he was great. He was a bit of an eye pace fan, I think, because um, he was sitting telling me how many percentage of Jaguars sold last year were eye paces and best selling car in the Jaguar range and uh, he had all these facts and figures right on his fingertips so he I reckon he's a bit of an eye pace lover uh, which is no bad thing so yeah uh, I would recommend them the Blackview DR900S 2 channel looks really nice so far obviously limited experience but it does look really good quality um, the rear camera is really small and neat the front one is is bigger and a bit bulkier uh, but it's got all the gubbins in it. The rear one just talks to the front one. The front one's got all the Wi-Fi components, the memory card, 
all of that in it so it has to be bigger and also it's a 4k camera which i suspect affects the size a bit as well but because it's behind the mirror it's really not that visible and um intrusive and i, I i'd rather have it and have a little bit of an intrusive camera than not have it and potentially um lose well lose my car if ultimately but you know potentially lose a lot of money um if somebody crashes and and into me and either drives away or denies blame um likewise it could just as well incriminate me if i drive into somebody but hey i probably just won't tell them i've got a dash cam in that case <laughs> um so yeah um let me know what you think down below uh what do you think of the installation what do you think of the camera um and i hope you've enjoyed it if you have enjoyed it then do please click on the thumbs up uh, that's always helpful does help the channel out a lot if people like the videos um, and if you want to be notified whenever i upload a new video then uh, click on the subscribe button down down there um, and after you've clicked on subscribe if you click on the little bell next to it uh, then that will give you notifications every time i upload a new video so you won't miss uh, any new recordings that i put on the channel so once again, any comments you have, feel free to leave them down below. I do try and reply to all comments um, in so much as I possibly can. If I don't, don't take offence. I've probably just not seen it because the the YouTube system for telling you that you've had comments is, is a bit flaky, to be honest. So if I don't reply, it's probably down to that. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed it and uh, hopefully I will see you again very soon. So until next time, this is Abu Dhabi Dude saying so long, take care, see you soon. Bye. Abu Dhabi Dude.